everybody and welcome to Power Poppy. I'm Allison Cope and today for Inspire Me Monday we're going to be coloring with embossing powders. So here are a few of the things that I'm going to use today. Instead of Versamark pad we're going to use the solution. Um, we're going to use our blender pen and we're also going to use a variety of different embossing powders. So let's get started. So I've stamped our Winter Wonderland image using a um, hybrid brown ink. Um, as long as it uh, doesn't smear with your Versamark solution, it's game on. So I'm going to bring out a scrap of paper here and we are going to put on some of our Versamark refill. Versamark is a sticky ink and is widely used to attach your embossing powder to emboss your images. So we're going to start with the berries and I'm going to use my blender pen kind of like a paintbrush here. The Versamark is sticky so it's wherever you put it is where our embossing powder is going to find itself stuck. Now, remember you have to do one color at a time. So if you want your berries different color than your leaves, then you've got to do one grouping at a time. So also be aware that most, for, mo for the most part, that embossing powders are pretty opaque, which means you can't see through them. So if there's any line delineage on your stamp, you may actually lose that detail. So be very, very aware of that. So if there's line details that you do not want covered up by embossing powder, don't put ink over them. All right, we're gonna do that little cluster of berries first. I always have lots of scrap paper on board. Just going to use my embossing buddy to put a little bit of powder down which I've already done on my paper here and I'm just going to sprinkle this is red tinsel it's so so pretty and we're gonna tap it off on our scrap this stuff has um, lots of glitter and boy does it go everywhere very static very very staticky so if there's any strays which this is not going to cooperate with me today um, use something sharp you can use the ends of your tweezers or a really fine tipped paintbrush to get rid of any strays just brush them off before you apply heat then they're not obviously going to bond themselves to the paper all right Let's uh, do some heat gun. I'm just going to put my excess paper back into the jar. Thank God for scrap paper. And I usually use the same paper over and over again for the same color. I try not to use um, different colors on it because it just, it sticks. Now, the other thing to note that when you're using a heat gun, give it 20 to 30 seconds to preheat so it's pushing out good heat. This will cause less warpage on your paper. So, mine doesn't take very long to warm up. And if you're worried that your embossing ink is going to scatter everywhere because maybe it's a little chunkier, um, apply your heat from below your image. Some embossing uh, powders are really easy to see um, change color, so they're really easy to tell whether they have fused properly. Um, this one's not too bad. It just it goes shiny. And look, I left out one little berry. <laughs> That's okay. You can always go back and fix it. OK, 
Okay, I'm going to go do my other berries and then we'll go on to the next step. All right, there we go. Our three sets of berries are done. And this time I'm going to work on the greenery that's tucked in behind all of our blooms. To me, it looks kind of like a dusty miller. Um, so I'm kind of kind of go with a minty theme for them. Why not, right? Um, best part about art is you can make it your own. So once again, I'm just applying my Versamark using my blender pen. I'm being pretty generous. I mean, it's not gloopy and it's not really runny, but it's, there's enough on there to ensure that that powder sticks appropriately. And I'm going to fill in all the details of that leaf out to the point. I'm trying not to go over the lines on the outside. So I'm bringing in a new piece of scrap paper. I keep all of my off prints from my computer. Or if, like if I've made an error or I've got too many copies of something. So I keep them off to the side and nice and close. Now I want to do a little bit of experimenting with mixing colors. So I've got some Zing, and this is powdered colored embossing powder. <laughs> this stuff is opaque, and I'm just using a palette knife to bring in like more minute little pieces. And I'm just picking tiny bits up and Sprinkling it over top of my Versamark. I'm just being kind of gentle. Tapping off the excess. Okay, so now <laughs> I'm going to bring in another color. Just one second here. So right, another sheet of scrap paper and we're going to use some this is gorgeous um, sparkly stuff called Turkish Nights and it's kind of like a it's got copper and gold kind of mixed in together and it's so pretty it's a little bit on it's not as fine as say that uh, minty color but I'm okay with that. So I'm just adding just just a sprinkling like it's barely barely there. So the main part of the leaf is going to show up as that mint color, but there's going to be ever so fine fleck of that coppery gold goodness. And because this one's a little bit or on the chunkier side, I am going to heat it from below. All right, let's go and heat it and see what, it, what kind of magic it makes. There it goes. So that mint has trapped some of that gorgeous, gorgeous sparkle in there. I mean, obviously it is an embossing powder, so it is going to stick, but isn't that amazing? Okay, I'm going to go finish the other greenery and we'll go on to the next blooms. So let's concentrate now on our blooms here. I'm okay if uh, things get blended. It just makes it look prettier. <laughs> All right, we're gonna bring in some color other than embossing. So I figured that we would use um, my Copic markers and we're just gonna add just ever so slight color into our anemones. And I'm not, even, I'm not doing anything special, I'm just going to add just a touch of color that's it 
they're such a pretty flower and a lot of times they don't have a lot of color or they're very very subtle so I'm going to do the same thing <laughs> We're going to shade them a little bit to put some of that kind of detail into the blooms and the image. And then I'm going to use a transparent kind of embossing powder this time so that our coloring then will show through. And of course you have to test out your colors to know whether they are transparent or not. So I've just used a BV000 and a BV00. I'm going to go finish my two other blooms and then we'll do the embossing part together. All right, so I've colored my blooms. I also came in and added a B41 as well. And now we're going to use this fun one and it's called Kaleidoscope. And it is on the bottle, um, but it has this um, really iridescent fleck in it. And it tends to reflect the light really very coolly. So we're going to add some of it. And I think this time I'm not going to do full coloring on the image. I think what I'll do is I'll do maybe the highlight areas edges maybe a little bit down into the petals and we'll do it that way now of course you could do all of your coloring first and then do all of your embossing at the end that probably would be a lot easier for sure so then you wouldn't be jumping back and forth. If you hear noise, it's my son. He's, it's Saturday, so he's home. Okay, once again, we need a new scrap of uh, scrap paper. If I can get it out of my stash. Okay. And we're gonna sprinkle this pretty liberally. See, I'm pretty sure you guys can probably see this. Anyway, I will heat emboss it and I'll come back and show you the end result. All right, we're back and hopefully I can get the camera to capture the sparkle. It is so very much sparkly <laughs> in real life. So, like I said, it's a kaleidoscope, so it picks up all the colors of the rainbow in it when it reflects back. So it's very, very, very cool. All right, I'm gonna finish my other anemones and we'll come back and do our final big bloom, our poinsettia. I wish you guys could see the full effect of um, the glare on my desk, but I've got like a blue <laughs> snow all over my desk. So I'm gonna use my Swiffer dusting cloth <laughs> here and I'm gonna pick up my glitter. This is my fairy wand. <laughs> All right, we've got some awesome iridescent and some sparkle going on here. And we have the centers of our anemones and we've also got our big, bold, beautiful poinsettia. Um, I'm thinking that we'll, before we get to our poinsettia, we'll do the centers of these. And I'm going to pull in another, yes, another embossing powder. And this one is a detail copper. Because our um, Turkish Nights has some copper in it, I thought it would play nice and uh, just make everything... Uh, look fabulous. So again, we're going to bring in our Versa Mark and our blender pen here to get into the detail. And this one I'm going to be a little bit more specific. Now, if you have a 
metallic pen, this might work a whole lot better. Just use your metallic pen and, and color in some of those stamen in the center. I'm going to try, haha, <laughs> and just color in a few and see how well my powder <laughs> does with that job. There we go. So I will color in some of these and I will be back and I'm going to apply my copper detailed embossing powder and we'll see the end result on those blooms. Wish me luck. So ta-da! Like I said, I didn't color everything in. I just kind of picked a few random fillers and added that Versamark to. So yeah, there, it, it works. I can add a little bit more color underneath to the other pieces that uh, are showing underneath. But let's let's finish up this image. Let's do this poinsettia. So I have decided that I am going to just color it with some Copic markers and then we'll add just a dusting ever so lightly of maybe some of the, um, we'll go back to the Turkish Nights and maybe even a really fine dusting of the powder from Zing here. All right, so join me for some coloring and uh, get that done. I'm going to put on some music and we're going to speed through this and... Wish me luck. Doki, our point center is colored, so now we're gonna get a little bit inventive here. And we're gonna use some Versamark ever so sparingly and just put tiny tiny little dots. And hopefully we can get some sticking action here. of some of our finer dusting of, we're going to use that uh, powder color, we're going to use a little bit of that Turkish Nights again, so I'm just kind of putting random dots, especially down kind of in the, the grooves of the poinsettia, because that's obviously where it would kind of collect. So we're going to 
going to use our Zing. And I think I'm going to That way I only get a pinch. Literally, it's like salt. And then I'm going to put a tiny, tiny bit of the Turkish Nights. Let's see if I can get that to stick too. All right. Now, because I've mixed the glitters, I'm not going to put the extra back in the bottle. I'm just going to put it in the garbage. Okay, it's not the total effect that I wanted. I wanted a little bit more sprinkly, but you know what? I'm okay with that. All right. So I'm going to call this one done. And I'm going to put a few finishing touches on there, and then we'll share the card at the end. And here's our finished card. So what I did for my background is I took my airbrush system, and if you put in your markers backwards with the brush tip in the end, um, you get splatter. So I kind of made a splatter background. I just put a bunch of pieces of paper over top of my image and kind of sort of semi-masked it out. Used a couple of dark brown markers to create some splatter. Then I actually took my blender solution, which is zero, and I have it in a mini mister. And I took out the wand out of here and I just kind of dabbed it on the background. And what it did was it made these voids. So I just wanted it to be slightly vintagey. And then I put a tiny little itty bitty strip of pattern paper down the side to bring out that deep teal color. So there she is, lots of shimmer and lots to look at on this card. I hope you've learned something today and I hope you'll join me again for another Inspire Monday. Hope to see you next time. Bye guys.